What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about three of the biggest birth control myths that I frequently hear about. And let's jump right in with number one, which is that you need to take birth control pills at the same time every day. This is really not technically true for combined oral contraceptive pills, which is the type that most people take. These are the ones that combine estrogen and progestin, okay? You can miss a dose more or less completely of these pills and then take you know, take the dose as soon as you realize it, then take the next one at the normal time, so you're essentially kind of like doubling up, and be fine. Now, where the one circumstance where this does become important is when you're coming off of the week of the placebo pills, like the week where you're just taking the, um, you know, the pills that don't contain any hormone when you'd have your period, um, and that's because since you've been off the hormones for a full week, now you're coming back to the beginning of the next week, if you don't take that dose at the appropriate time, the levels of hormone in your blood are going to start to drop, okay? And then at that point, the effectiveness could be decreased, okay, from that point forward. The other instance where it is important to take them at the same time is if you're on the progestin only or the mini pill, uh, which is not super commonly prescribed except for uh, oftentimes women who were recently pregnant, and that's because there's concerns with combined oral contraceptives interfering with lactation, okay, so like women that are trying to breastfeed. That pill, since it only contains progestin and is not a combined oral contraceptive, is also important to take at the same time every single day. Let's move on to myth number two, and that is that the pull-out method, or coitus interruptus, or whatever you want to call it, is a very ineffective form of birth control. This myth is perpetuated, I think, unfortunately, mostly by sexual health educators who, with good intentions, want to encourage their students to use birth control. But the data, interestingly enough, actually show that the pull-out method is almost as effective as using condoms. So with birth control, a lot of times we talk about typical use, which, which is the way that most people use the method, versus perfect use, which is the way that the method is intended to be used perfectly for maximum effectiveness. So for condoms, the typical, with typical use, the effectiveness is 82% at preventing pregnancy. With the pull-out method, it's 78%. So it's a little bit less, but like that's not a very big difference. And then with perfect use, the effectiveness of condoms jumps up to 98%, and for the pull-out method, it's 96%. That's like pretty, pretty good, right? For something that's often touted as like a very irresponsible kind of thing to do, um, and obviously it doesn't provide any protection against sexually transmitted infections, but as far as effectiveness as a form of birth control, it's actually pretty good. And let's move on then to myth number three, and this is the one that drives me the craziest because I hear it, I see it on like websites that are from, you know, reputable sources for sexual health information, I hear it from doctors, and uh, that is that the method of double bagging or wearing two condoms is a terrible idea because that will cause the condoms to break. This comes from a theoretical concern that the friction of rubber against rubber will increase the likelihood of condoms breaking, I guess, which sort of makes sense. However, what the data actually show, and this comes from a study um, of actually sex workers, I believe in Thailand, among those sex workers that double bagged, they actually had a lower incidence of contracting HIV and even more interesting, the rate of uh, condom breakage per episode of sex that they had actually decreased among those that wore two condoms from 1.8% for people that were just wearing one condom to 0.2% for people that were wearing two condoms. So it actually means you're less likely to have condoms break when you wear two versus when you're wearing one. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily recommend that you do that because the absolute risk of uh, breaking happening is pretty low to begin with, but it's just interesting to know. We always hear that it's like such a bad idea because it will cause them to break. That's really not what the data show. So I'll include all the links to the different studies that I mentioned in the description box below if you'd like to do some more reading. These are like, you know, primary literature scientific articles, so um, it will require some kind of baseline knowledge of statistics and those types of things. But I hope, uh, regardless, you all found this video informative and interesting, and I wish you the best health possible. See you later.